Hey, I'm Josh Robertson, Bear Crop Science FSR, out here today in Nashville, North Carolina with Evans Farms. So here in the east and all along the coastal region, we're getting ready to begin cotton harvest. Uh, so we thought it would be a great idea to get with our friends from Climate Corporation and go through how to set up uh, cotton pickers with Climate Field View. Justin, tell us a little bit about something we're going to be going through today. Absolutely. So I'm Justin Jones. I'm the Climate Activation Manager here in the southeast and get a lot of questions this time of year about setting up what's compatible as a cotton picker, how do we set it up, things like that. If you like the video that we're sharing with you here today, please, please be sure to like, share, and even leave a comment below if you like what you see. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention to you today is Bear Plus Rewards. If you have signed your farm and operation up for Bear Plus Rewards for the 2021 season, you will receive a free year of Climate Field View simply by linking your Climate Field View email address to your Bear Plus Rewards account. Visit mybearplusrewards.com for more information. All right, so we've moved up here into the cab of the picker. Uh, we're going to go over the parts that are necessary to make field view operational on your machine. So, Justin, what are the top of mind things that we need to be sure we have in place to make this work? We need some OEM equipment from John Deere, as well as some equipment from FieldView. So on the John Deere side, you need to make sure that your picker is equipped with a monitor. In this case, we have a 2630. Uh, you need a Green Star globe that plugs into that 2630. And the last thing you need, the most, the most important thing, is you need a mass flow sensor on your cotton picker. So that's the part that collects our yield data. All right, so now that we know the pieces of equipment that are necessary to make the field view drive, uh, the field view cab app operational uh, for the cotton picker, let's talk about the basics of how to set this thing up. So Justin, the first thing we're gonna wanna do anytime we connect field view is obviously connect our field view drive. Show us or tell us where the field view drive is located in the cotton picker. Absolutely, so the field view drive plugs into the CAN bus port of the cotton picker. And this particular machine, the 7760, that is underneath the hydrostat near my right ankle. So you'll see that on the column by the windshield. And what you'll do is you'll plug that drive in and give it a quarter turn until it locks. And let's walk through in the cab app how to go about connecting the drive to the iPad. So Josh, to connect that field view drive, it's really a two-step process. So the first step is to connect that drive to the iPad. So I'm going to go to my settings on the iPad, open up the Bluetooth menu. There's Jones Drive. That's the drive I've plugged in. It will connect. So that's step one. Now the light on the drive is flashing blue. It's indicating it's been connected to the iPad. Next, we'll go into the field view cab app. Under settings and devices, you'll see your drive again. Here it says Jones Drive, tap to connect. It'll ask you to rename your drive, and it'll ask you to assign a piece of equipment. So All right, so Justin, everything so far seems pretty easy, getting the drive connected and everything. We've gotten to the part where we're going to build the cotton picker out. Let's actually walk through how to build this cotton picker and the things we need to be thinking about there. Absolutely. So to build the equipment, we have what I call a wizard. You're going to select your type. Here we're in a cotton harvester. It's a John Deere model, 7760. And to name it, I'm going to name it, 7760 cotton picker. It's now going to let us know we've added a new drive, so we're going to hit finish. And here, it's time to go measure. This first measurement is from the globe to the pivot point. So you'll measure from the center of the hub to the center of the globe. That needs to be confirmed. Measurement V is ground height to the center of the globe, which also needs to be confirmed. In this case, it was remained at default. And then measurement C is the globe offset left to right. Very important. In this case, it came from the factory in the center, so it remains at zero. All right, we've just finished the GPS offsets, but now we need to move to the head. So we've gone down and confirmed that it's 93 inches from the center of that hub to the tip of the nose. We have a six row machine and measurement B is a row spacing. So it defaults. All right, so we're back up in the cab now. We've uh, confirmed all of the default measurements that were in our system to be accurate and we're ready to move on to the next step. Justin, tell us what that next step is around crop settings. Yeah. So here's a picture of our setting screen for the uh, cotton picker. So in the top left shared swath, if you were running more than one cotton picker in the field, this will allow you to share my maps back and forth. 
the automatic swath sensitivity, I leave that at less sensitive. Um, if you ever have any issues with poor mapping, you can adjust it, but we recommend to call support before you do anything like that. The moisture and moisture source, we're in a cotton pick, there is no moisture meter. Uh, and last but not least is the flow sensor lag. That's defaulting to four seconds. Again, if your map is, is being cut up or it's not as accurate as you like it, you can adjust that. But it's a... So here I'm on the crop settings. The current crop is set to cotton because we're in a cotton harvester. These two numbers, the nominal bale mass and the gin turnout percentage are very important. And you want the gin turnout percentage to match that on the OEM. So the nominal bale mass, if looking at a field view map, looking at bales per acre, it's important that we adjust that as necessary. The gin turnout percentage can be adjusted. So you want to make sure this matches your OEM monitor. So up here, we're gonna to jump to the 2630. To navigate to your current picker settings in the 2630, you're gonna hit the soft menu button, select green star, and then you wanna to go to document. Uh, we're gonna, our gin set is set to 42.7. So if you wanna change that, you'll go to change harvest settings, and here, you can edit that. I'm gonna accept it. And then we'll jump back home and we're ready. So we need to change this gin turnout to 42.7 to mimic that 2630. If there is a difference between the two, you will see a discrepancy between your maps. So we all... all right, Justin, so now we've gone through all the cotton picker settings, all the measurements. I think we are ready to go to the field at this point in time. So we'll be switching back over to the map screen in the cab app where we should see the green widget boxes uh, down the left-hand side. What else should we be looking for here? Here, take a look. We've got some new features. We've got a module mapping button. So each time you drop a module in the field, you can map it and things like that. So I encourage everybody to, to get set up and, and get ready for the field. All right. That sounds good, Justin. Thanks for coming out here today and joining us to uh, help us figure out how to set these cotton pickers up. I want to thank Evans Farm again for letting us uh, jump in their 7760 right here before harvest. Uh, we're looking forward to a, to a successful harvest season collecting these maps through Climate Field View and uh, analyzing the data at the end of the year. Thanks for joining us.